a marketing rebel, a marketing rebel. Hey, I've seen some garbage online lately about building an education business slash expert business. I wanted to get you guys some insights if you're looking to get into that business. So just some background on me, if you don't know me just yet and you're watching this video for the first time, I started my first online business in 2006. I went on to build and sell seven different online companies and have been hired by some of the top educators that have been around for over a decade, some for consulting and some to run their marketing departments. And here are some of the important lessons that I learned along the way. So one way is to build a targeted audience first. So people spend a lot of time on the product and no time on growing the audience for that product. And you can see why that's an issue because you may not know that the audience even wants your product. So a great example, great way to actually start building an audience is go ahead and create a Facebook group. Get that group hyper engaged on the topic and the way at the topic and the product that you want to offer them. And then once you get more information from them, you can launch it to them, but start with the value in the group. So this is the most important thing that you can do when starting. There are ways to test offer ideas, products, uh, et cetera, before putting the work into a product, right? You want to make sure that you actually put the time, energy, and effort to building the audience. Make sure you're speaking to the right people. And if you're speaking to the right people, you'll know exactly what product to offer them. So I want to drive that point home. The next thing is copywriters are money makers. So I've had so many people over the years discount the value of great copywriting. Everyone likes to, to think they can write copy, but in reality, they suck compared to the pros. So I've worked with and am friends with some amazing copywriters. These guys are hoping to hit a winner every three out of 10, and this is after lots of edits, tests, and rewrites. Yes, newbies always believe they can hit home run at their first time at bat, but that's not the case. You have two options when you do this. Practice, 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 or hire someone. I prefer to hire people. I pay on average $10,000 per offer, and my last four offers have resulted in three losers. That's right, three losers, and one with potential. So we're now iterating to make it a winner. And another important piece is that offers go stale. So if you're in it for the long haul, then know that offers will go stale. You will consistently need to be testing, iterating, and creating new offers to make sure that your product doesn't die. What happens most of the time is people never make changes and after a while they can't figure out why the conversions aren't the same. Next, you got to take refunds seriously. So people, people overlook the issue of refunds. You are going to you are going to be at least a 10% with any sort of volume and upwards of 25% during the holidays and tax season. So don't go spending all your money without accounting for them. Right? What happened and one big mistake I see that a lot of people make is they make all this revenue, they generate this gross number of sales, and then they never account for any refunds and all the other expenses that go into the business. So we used to have, uh, here's an example, we used to have a multi-step process for saving sales from refunds and fighting chargebacks. People buy on the dopamine high, but they refund on the reality of knowing that they won't do the work. So be prepared for that. I actually once had a customer who hired us for a three month engagement and after we fulfilled, he decided he wanted to go up, go to Europe on vacation. So he called his bank to charge back our fees for this trip. It was with Amex. We lost the money plus what I paid my team to work on it. We, you know, we didn't have the time. There's all these things that happened. We didn't have time to respond. They sent the letter the wrong place, so we didn't respond in time. So that stuff happens, right? So another thing, businesses have costs. Many people think this business is high margins because they don't value their time. Some of the bigger REI uh, education companies, some of the bigger expert companies I've worked with operate at a healthy 35 to 40% profit. And the ones who are above this tend to do all the work themselves and never account the cost of them doing the work. So yes, there is such thing as sweat equity, but if you're doing all the work yourself, there is a value to that, there's a cost to that. So here's a couple examples uh, for you to look at. So affiliate promotions. If, if you have someone who promotes your product, well, you have a product and you need an audience. So you can partner with someone who already has that audience, right? So what they do is they spend time emailing and selling your product for sometimes 50% commission. Sometimes it might be a, a set fee for every sale, but let's say you do 20,000 sales together. Costs are 50% to the affiliate. You got 3% going to your merchant account, 10% in refunds, 50% in most of like customer support, marketing tools, product fulfillment, service, right? This example alone, 
gives you less than 25% net profit on that initial promotion. So to add the refunds above, make sure to hold a percentage of affiliate funds, right? So if you have affiliates, one thing that you can do is hold a percentage of those funds so when chargebacks do happen, you're not going back to that person and asking them, obviously, for the refund, but you have this rolling process where that percentage can be pulled back out of the funds you're holding. Now, that doesn't, I'm not saying go hold like 75% or whatnot, but 10% is a decent number and it's common practice in some companies. So many aff affiliates, uh, keep in mind, many affiliates barely make enough money to pay the BMW 325i lease payment and mom some rent. So they will disappear faster than Joe Biden getting asked a question from Fox News. So with that said, make sure that you're working with affiliates that aren't fly by night and moving out of the way. So here's an example. Back in 2009, I had my accountant pay out $175,000 in affiliate commissions on a $150,000 promotion. Yeah, you heard that right. $175,000 on $100,000 promotions. Now, what happened is, what had happened is we made this, uh, we, we ran this promotion, he sent out the payments, he never marked that he made those payments, so then he sent out that same number again. So what happened is he sent out the first payment, he sent out the first payment a second time, and during that time we had refunds, so we also didn't, you know, obviously have that refunds. You know, the cool thing about that is the affiliates that understood that, hey, we made a mistake, they sent money back, uh, and then there's ones that didn't, and, and, and that was just, the truth of it we can't can't control that but i do know that karma did not last did not uh, treat them very well next thing in for you is pay traffic the only real option to grow at scale is to get into pay traffic this raises your cost up front and the one willing to pay the most for a customer wins one of my old clients is willing to take a loss for six months before he breaks even he's willing to spend a hundred dollars today knowing he will end up with 133 dollars in month seven can you compete with that? So when you get into paid traffic, also be ready to spend thirty dollars to $50,000 before figuring things out. Don't go in with 2K thinking you're going to make tons of money and hit a home run. It's not the case. You gotta test, you gotta tweak, you gotta make things happen. Also, another big issue I see is people, small data isn't duplicatable to paid traffic. So many people get excited with a small win of like, 50 people buying on a webinar and having 10% or more buy, right? You know, 50 people being on a webinar and 10% or more buying. These are great stats for a warm audience. If you've got a, a very engaged warm audience, you're gonna, your numbers are gonna look way different than when you go to pay traffic. So keep that in mind. You should not rely upon when, you, you shouldn't rely on those stats when going to pay traffic. By the way, Pay traffic is the only way to build a real business in my mind, in, in my belief here. So also, you gotta be immune to haters. Many people are keyboard tough. They can bash you online with outright lies to scam sites. I had someone email me five years after buying a product and ask for a refund. I didn't give him them that refund, so they went online and bashed me as being an online scam artist stealing money from people. Five years, five years later, right? Crazy. But that's tough to have. You gotta be immune to it, move on. Now, there's two different types of ex expert business owners, and I wanna point them out. One is the solopreneur who does all the work and has an assistant handle things. Nothing wrong with this, right? But it's play money and a non-sellable business. And I've been in, I've been this in the past. It's, it's, it's okay if you're there. The next one is a business owner. For example, a close friend of mine pulls in close to 4 million per month, has over 120 employees, and just had a professional valuation done for a large eight figure number. So just decide what one you want to be. Do you want to be the solopreneur who's making some good play money or do you want to build a real big foundational business going forward? Just decide what you wanna be. No right or wrong answer, it just needs to fit the lifestyle that you want. These are just a few lessons that I wanted to pass on to you if you're looking about getting into the education business or expert business. Now, it's a good cash flow business, right? It's a good cash flow business and that's why people get excited about it, but it's not as easy as most people make it out to be. So just prepare, take some of these things into account, put it into your business, implement it, you know, think about how this affects your business going forward, decide what expert business you wanna be in and go from there.